Hello friends, welcome to Compassion Camp Week 5. My name is Miss Grace. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm so overwhelmed with joy that you got to spend these last few weeks with us. I'm so happy that you were able to join with us and do the crafts and sing and learn the lessons too. Sometimes I'm overwhelmed with really good feelings like joy and happiness and being excited and other times I'm overwhelmed with feelings that are kind of hard to deal with sometimes. Sometimes feelings of sadness or maybe feeling like there's just so much going on in my life that it's hard to focus. Have you ever felt that way sometimes when you have tons of things going on and it's hard to organize them? When I feel overwhelmed, I always remember that I always have a chance to start over. I get to start fresh. That means if you are doing something or you messed up on a project or you maybe had a fight with your brother or your sister or something hard happened to you, you can remember that you can always have a fresh start. You can start over and you don't have to wait to the next day to start over. You can start over in this moment that you have right now. Have you ever felt overwhelmed? And have you ever wanted to take a break from that? When have you wanted a fresh start or wanted to take a rest? Fresh starts feel so good because when we get a fresh start, it gives us hope for the future. Imagine how great it feels after you clean up your room if it hasn't been cleaned for a while and you organize and you put everything in its spot and everything's clean and organized and you sit in your room and take a deep breath isn't it such a good feeling to have a fresh, clean, new room? Anytime you're feeling overwhelmed, remember, go back to your breath and remember that you have control over yourself. You don't have control over other people. Other people have control over themselves. And that actually makes it really special because that means we get to create and say wonderful things to other people and encourage other people to be the best that they can be. Today's song our friends are going to teach you is called Compassion Prayer. Will you join along?
In today's story, we learn that God loves fresh starts. God loves giving people new chances to try again or to rest. As we prepare to learn more about fresh starts, let's begin with a compassion prayer. Can you place one hand on your head and one hand on your heart so we can connect our mind and our heart together? Can you repeat after me? Joyful spirit, your loving hands are always creating freedom, release, and fresh starts. Help us do the same today by caring for all living things with gentleness and care. Open us to humbly receive that same care ourselves. Make our hearts smile and our actions sing with your promise of abundance towards the whole world. Amen. Hello friends, my name is Miss Lindsay. For today's Bible story, you will hear from myself and three of my other friends. We will each take part in telling you a story from Leviticus chapter 25. Here's a little backstory. So after the Israelites were freed from slavery in Egypt, they traveled for many years to the land God promised them. We're going to learn about an important and wonderful tradition from God's people. It's called Jubilee. It's a way of starting over. When people were given a fresh start, we see, feel, and trust how God's abundance meant for all people and creation. As you listen to the story today, think about what it's like to have a fresh start. The people of Israel journeyed through the vast wilderness for many years. Finally, they arrived at Mount Sinai where they rested. God gave instructions to their leader Moses for their life together in this new land. These were the things God said. In this land, we will practice Sabbath together. This will happen not only on the seventh day, but on the seventh year. For six years, we will do our regular work and plant seeds. We'll grow, prune, and harvest fruits. But in the seventh year, we'll let the land rest. Even the land needs rest, peace and quiet. Everyone will be able to harvest and eat whatever the land gives us in that seventh year. In the 50th year, we will celebrate Jubilee together. This will be like the Sabbath every seven years, where we'll let the land rest. It will be a fresh start for the whole community, the land and the people, and everyone will go to their own homes and be together in joy. It is a holy time and we will be fed and nourished by whatever the land gives us. In this time, we will respond with justice by giving fresh starts. This means that we will be fair and honest to one another. We will take care of those who are sick, alone, old, or need help. We will welcome people who are from different countries, and they will be like family. We will work for people's freedom. We will all work together to help everyone rest and rejoice in God's abundance. I will bless the land during this year so you do not have to work the land. I promise we will all be fed and nourished by the land's gifts. What do you imagine when you hear the word justice? Do you imagine courthouses or police officers? Do you imagine what happens when someone hurts you and then they're punished for it? Do you imagine it's like equal treatment? Everyone gets the same amount of food or treats. Often, God's ideas are very different from ours. God's idea of justice looks more like all the ways we've talked about compassion. It means seeing and welcoming, being brave and honest, loving ourselves, being present with each other. It means that we see God's abundance. What does abundance mean? It means that there's enough for everyone. God promises that there is enough for everyone. We can welcome everyone to the table, just like God asks us to. We can be brave and treat each other well trusting one another. We can be honest with our hearts and honest with each other. We can give and receive care and 
we can do the work with God to care for all creation. That sounds like a lot, but God promises that God will be with us and provide what we need so that we can trust in God and enjoy the fruits of our labors. God tells us that we will always have enough, especially when we share with one another and live lives that are compassionate and loving to everyone around us. That is Jubilee. Hi everyone. So for our matching and coloring today, we're gonna to go ahead and go into our family path guide and we're gonna get our session five imagine and coloring sheet. And it's with the world and it looks like this. And we're gonna go ahead and color this today as we talk about questions, as we talk about some thoughts. Um, so as you're going ahead and coloring this, I'm gonna go ahead and ask you a couple of things and we're gonna to think together as a group and whatever comes to mind, go ahead and say the first thing. It's just a discussion where we can talk to each other a little bit more and get a little bit deeper in thought. So go ahead and get that and let's get started on coloring. What were some of the things God wanted the Israelites to do? Why? What does it feel like to rest? Why do you think it's important to have a fresh start? Why do you think it's important for the land to rest? Now let's imagine. How do you imagine the people of Israel felt about this command? How do you imagine the sick, lonely, or old felt about this command? What about people from different countries? Let's go ahead and go into our Compassion Camp poster and you're going to go ahead and get your poster. I hope you've already printed it out. Um, from our previous sessions, you've already colored some in the spots and there's maybe a couple of spots that are left over, okay? And what you're going to go ahead and do is you're going to find out all the moments of compassion that show fresh starts and caring for each other and you're going to color them in. So you can create some sort of game I spy with anybody that you have around or you can go ahead and just color them in. All right, but you're gonna look for those moments. Here's some hints, maybe can help you out. Two people painting a globe mural. Um, some people picking up trash on the beach. A rainbow, and maybe a building boarded up with a clothes sign on it. So there's some hints. Go ahead and look for those on your Compassion Camp poster and color them in. Hi friends, 
The next activity, the create and play, you will need your Jubilee puzzle template. The year of the Jubilee helped the people of Israel rest, make things right, and prepare for the future. Using your puzzle template, draw and color a picture of what it looks like when things are given fresh starts and made right. You might imagine people who have everything they need, a healthy environment, children who are safe. What does a healthy world look like to you? So draw what you feel looks like a healthy world. And then after you're done with your drawing, I want you to cut it apart on the dotted lines to create a puzzle. Think about how we make our world less restful and less just. Then you put your puzzle back together. And then you think about the ways compassion inspires us to make things right again. While you're doing this activity, things to, things to think about. What does it feel like to draw a joyful, restful, and just scene? And then what does it feel like to cut it apart? And then how do you feel when you put it back together? Our next activity is meditation. And it's a rhythmic hand meditation. And what I'd like you to do is take one hand and spread your fingers out wide. And then with the other hand, you take your index finger, pointer finger, and you're going to trace the outside of each finger slowly. As you do this, when you go up a finger, you take a breath in. And when you go down, breathe out. When you've gotten to your pinky, retrace your steps. Great. When you're all done with this hand, take out your other hand and do the same thing. Remember to breathe. This exercise can be so helpful whenever you feel like you need to refresh. Try doing this exercise before a nap or maybe before bed. After you rest, notice how you feel fresh with new energy to do the things that you enjoy with your family. Remembering that when we do yoga, we're connecting to our breath and remembering how that feels to release and receive and reminding ourselves of how compassion also makes us feel. So last day, so just really pay attention to how you're feeling. All right, so we start again, sitting like this, three breaths. And the phrase today is, I am a part of God's balance and fresh starts. So I'm a part of God's balance and fresh starts. All right, three breaths, ready, inhale, I am a part, exhale, of God's balance and fresh starts. Inhale, I am a part, of God's balance and fresh starts. Last breath, really inhale. I am a part, exhale, of God's balance and fresh starts. And then from here, I'm going to stand.
stand on up to mountain pose. Remember how when you feel strong and sturdy right here. So go ahead and reach on up. Stretch your arms up. Go ahead and forward fold. Sweep out a little bit. Bend your legs. And then go ahead and we're going to move into plank pose. One breath here. Inhale. Go ahead and inhale to your upward facing dog. Then go ahead and exhale. Come down and facing dog. And from here, we're going to pick up our right foot. You're going to go ahead and step your right foot forward. All right. Get your balance and then go ahead and stand on up to warrior one. Again, make sure that your front knee is over your ankle as best as you can. And that your back leg is strong and sturdy, and then your heel is rounding down. And then take a breath here. And as you exhale, go ahead and turn your foot so that the back foot is perpendicular, your front foot stays the same. And stretch your arms out long, your breath, stand up straight. Go ahead and look out over your right fingertips. Breath here. And as you exhale, Go ahead and lean forward, plant your palms back into downward facing dog. You guys see there, I'm just gonna move so that you can see on that side. So downward facing dog. All right, left foot this time comes forward. All right, for your bottom. Turn to come back. Front knees over your ankle. Then go ahead, move it to your golden two. Breath here. Exhale, go ahead and move on back. Stay there, I'm gonna move again. Uh, back into your downward facing dog. And then from here, you go ahead and step on up to the front of your mat. And from here, we're gonna do some tree. So go ahead, so there's a couple different variations of tree. You can either have your foot up against your ankle if you're having a little trouble balancing, if you're feeling pretty good, you can move it on up. You've got your calf, all right, never on your knee. Don't put weight against your knee. Or if you want, you can move it up to your thigh, above your knee. Or if you want, if you're really feeling confident about balancing, you can go ahead and try this. When you do this, try and bend this knee, press this knee back so that your two knees are in one line. Go ahead, bring your palms up. Feel how balanced and sturdy you are. You're strong, confident. Exhale, your leg back onto the ground. Now other side, remember you can do here, here, here even, or here, lots of options. Any one of them is good. All right, go ahead, bring your palms up if you can. If you can, you can wobble for a little bit. Then bring your palms together. Or rest them on your sides if that's easier. Put palms together. Go ahead, take a couple breaths. Balance, if you need to, you can find a spot on the floor or the wall. Just sort of gently stay here. One more breath. All right, go ahead, set your leg on down. Reach on up. Thus, mountain stretch. And then down, and now I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna run through the whole thing one more time, much more quickly, you can follow along, and you don't have to. But, all right, so start again, mountain pose. Watch up. Exhale, arms down. Make sure you're paying attention to your breath. Go ahead, walk it forward into plank. Inhale, exhale, feel how sturdy your palms are. Inhale, into your upward facing dog. Exhale, down facing dog. Inhale, right leg steps forward. Go ahead, round your back heel back. Reach up. Warrior one, one breath. Inhale, exhale, go ahead, step your foot. Or, oh, wait. You can catch balance, or you can move back into warrior two, like this. All right, stay here, one breath. Go ahead, move your arms back. Step it back, down the facing dog. Inhale, on the foot, exhale, up. One breath, exhale. Move into warrior two. Feel how steady you are here. Strong. Out of your fingertips. 
a low breath. Exhale, go ahead, turn your hands back to the ground. Step back. Then go ahead and inhale. Top of your mat. And exhale, forward fold. Inhale on up. And then exhale. And then for tree pose, go ahead, pick your right leg up. One breath here. Inhale. Exhale. Switch foot back down. Pick up your other foot. One breath here. Inhale. Exhale. And reach your arms up. Inhale. Exhale. Close the pose. Namaste. The light in me sees and acknowledges the light in you. Our compassion and action activities remind us how we can be with each other so that in everything we make, do, or say, we feel Emmanuel or God with us. These small, simple acts express the deep, wide compassion of God. Today, we are thinking about how we can understand and show compassion in a jubilee sense. Compassion begins by seeing and welcoming. We need to be brave and trust God to help us act compassionately. But compassion also means caring for and loving ourselves so we can trust our voices. And all of this helps us be present with each other along the way as we follow God's lead. When we cultivate all these seeds of compassion, we become open to seeing the wideness and the goodness of all of God's creation. We show compassion to the earth as a way of rejoicing in God's abundance. There is enough. Our, Our compassion and action activities this week will help us connect to the provision or the providence of the land by showing us how God makes a fresh start in creation. Today, we're gonna to plant some seeds. And you have a couple of ways you can do this. You all know that you can take a seed out into the yard and plant it in the dirt. But if you wanna see the seed growing, the fresh start happening, you could find a glass or a jar and plant some seeds in it. Let me show you how. First thing you're gonna need is a clear glass or a jar and some paper towels. So I'm gonna take off two or three paper towels and I'm gonna fold them up and kind of mash them together so that they are going to fill my jar, okay? See how that fills that in there? All right, and you think, Susan, Paper towels aren't gonna to grow into anything. No, they're not. But we're gonna water our paper towels a little bit, not too much. We want them to be damp, but so that they can help something grow. But we don't want it to be too soggy. So if you see too much water going to the bottom of the jar, stop, okay? Now, let me test it and feel it. Does that feel like it's wet? Oh yeah, that's pretty wet. Okay, now we're going to get some seeds. And today I have some um, lima bean seeds that I'm gonna plant, but you could also use sunflower seeds or even um, peas, any kind of large bean seed works really well for this, okay? So the lima beans, do you guys like lima beans? Uh, lima bean seeds look just like lima beans. They're pretty big. And so what we're gonna do, is we are going to slide the seeds down between the glass and the jar. Can you see it there? So you'll be able to see the seed as it grows. And you can do a few, depending on how many seeds you have. Slide them down in there, okay? And keep the, I'm gonna put maybe three, maybe another one over here. Um, Keep the paper towel damp, okay? You can water it. You probably don't need to water it every day, but water it, um, keep the, the towel damp, put it in a uh, bright place, a windowsill or something, 
And as the seed sprouts and grows, you're gonna be able to see not only the roots coming down, like little threads, you're also gonna see the sprout of the plant coming up, okay? So watch and see God's fresh start right here in your jar. That's one way to experience a fresh start this week. And it'll take a few days, you have to be patient for it. Sometimes we don't get a fresh start right when we want. The second way to share God's abundance and um, creation with others is to make a seed bomb. Now, this sounds pretty exciting, right? Because what do bombs do? They explode. But these bombs, because they're made of seeds, explode with what? Plants and flowers. It's gonna be so exciting. Here's what you need. You need some um, paper shreds, okay? And I'm gonna put them in my bowl here, all right? And you can, if you don't have already shredded paper, like in your parents' um, shredder, you can, I'm making a mess with my paper. You can tear up recycled paper or construction paper or even newspaper, okay? Any kind of paper that you have. You're gonna put it in a bowl and I'm going to pour my water over it, dun da da and cover, it's like cereal, only it's paper. I'm gonna cover it with water, okay? Now, I'm gonna set this aside for 20 minutes and let the paper soak up that water. Now, this is the hardest part because waiting is really hard, okay? But you can do it. So let me set this aside and we'll be back and I'll show you the next steps. Okay, it's been about 20 minutes. I know, it went by like that for you. But I've been waiting patiently and we now have a bundle of wet Paper shreds, yum. Okay, and now these are pretty pulpy and you might be able to mix the seeds right in with this, but it'll be even better if you put it in a blender or a food processor and get it all mushed up so it's really, really pulpy. Okay, so I have my blender here, can you see it? And I'm just going to um, put most of this in the blender, ready? Here we go, whoop. All right, kind of weird putting non-food things into the blender. So ask your mom or dad before you do this, but it cleans up like anything else. So um, because paper is made from trees, it's actually kind of like food. It's like putting vegetables in there, right? But still, you don't want to put, uh, you don't want to use the blender and, and put things in there without talking to your mom and dad first. Okay, so I've got the stuff in my blender and now I'm going to wipe the stuff that's stuck to my hand off. I'm gonna add okay. some more water. I'm gonna add this water from the bowl. Okay, see what we can get. We can always strain the water out later. There we go, water helps. Okay. Oh, there it's coming. we're making a paper milkshake, right? So we're gonna get it. Okay, now what you're gonna wanna do, now that you have your paper milkshake, I'm gonna show it to you. Um, it's still very wet, because we added all that water in there with it. It's actually bubbling, can you see it? <laughs> um, anyway, we're gonna try and pour some of the water out and leave the paper in. So I have two bowls here, and I'm gonna Hold my hand over this and see if I can get the water out first. And then when it starts to get paper, I'm gonna pour the rest into another bowl. So now what you have is what we call paper pulp. And it feels really good. It's kind of slimy and wet, yay. Okay, I'm gonna squeeze more of the water out because Really, we don't want all this extra water in here, but we wanna leave as much of the paper as we can. And then, just like if you were wringing out a sponge, you can kind of wring out some more of the water. Okay. So now what I have is this big goo of 
paper pulp. See if how, how I wring it out, more water comes out. Do that over a bowl or over the kitchen sink and just keep squeezing that water out. Okay, see how it's still, there's a lot in there. Um, okay, but right now my, my gotten most of the water out, it's not super drippy and I have just a bunch of paper pulp. Looks pretty cool, huh? Mash it together to get the water out. Now we're gonna kind of break it apart, okay, into the bowl. Um, so it once again kind of looks like soggy cereal instead of paper cereal, okay? And you're gonna get some seeds. You can use whatever kind of seeds you want. Um, fast growing things are really great, like Cosmos or Marigolds. But if you are going to plant these in your neighborhood um, randomly, then you probably want to use something that's native to your area. So like California wildflowers. So I have poppy seeds here. Um, not the kind that come in your muffin, but actual California poppy seeds. And I'm just going to take about a teaspoonful to start. Okay, small handful. And I'm going to sprinkle it into the paper. And then we're going to mix it into the paper. Okay, so you're basically kneading the seeds into the paper. All right, and you're still squeezing some of that water out, but get all those seeds in there. Okay, and then, and you can put as many seeds as you have or as few as you have, it doesn't really matter, but you want, you want a few. I've got, you can see how they're kind of studded through there. Um, then I'm gonna break it into little balls, okay? And squeeze the water out again as I do that. Now they're kind of cookie size. You know when you make cookies and, and you have the balls of cookie dough on your sheet? So you have about a cookie ball size. You can see the paper and the seeds in it. And you're gonna put it actually on a baking sheet or on a plate somewhere where it can dry, okay? So I'm just gonna set it on my table here for now. Um, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna make some more. So I'm going to, again, break off some just like I was making cookies. Squeeze the, squeeze the water out and set it aside. These are gonna dry um, at least overnight, okay? You can put them in the sun uh, or just leave them out to dry. And once the paper dries, it will hold on to the seeds and then you can plant them. So take you could give them to a friend, okay? And say, here's some seeds that you could plant in your yard tell them to just cover them with dirt, like a regular seed, and, and it'll grow. Or, if you wanna be a little uh, sneaky about it, you could plant them somewhere in your neighborhood, somewhere that doesn't have a lot of vegetation or like a vacant lot. You could dig a little hole in the dirt, put your seed bomb in, cover it up with dirt, and then come back and see what happens. Keep checking on it. Um, see, how, see how that might grow. So I used about a teaspoon of seeds and a few cups of paper shreds, and I've made about six seed bombs. It gives you an idea. So this project takes a little while and it probably needs some parent help with the blender and the shredding and all that. Although you don't need a shredder to shred the paper, you can do it with your hands. Um, but it's really fun to have these little colorful seed bombs that you can either give to a friend to plant in their yard or you could go plant somewhere in your neighborhood or at a park and see what happens. And that's a wonderful way to put our compassion into action by having a fresh start in the world. Have fun with that. Thank you so much for joining us for this BBS for week five. God's compassion is God's justice and working for God's just justice, making things right, releases God's abundance into the world, making sure everyone has what they need. And when we rest and help people and the land to rest, we show God's justice. When we gather together at the table in joy, we show God's justice. And when we care for those who need help the most, we show God's justice. Justice, making things right, is what happens when we are compassionate. These are ways we show compassion, seeing and welcoming friends, being brave and showing up, loving ourselves, 
being present with each other, and having fresh starts. And when we do these things, we show God's love, peace, and justice with the world. Can we close the same way we opened today? Let's put one hand on our head and one hand in our heart. And can you repeat after me? Joyful spirit, your loving hands are always creating freedom, release, and a fresh start. Help us do the same today by caring for all living creatures with gentleness and care. Open us to humbly receive that same care ourselves. Make our hearts smile and our actions sing with your promise of abundance towards the whole world. Amen. I wanted to encourage you also to get out your coloring sheet for the prayer and color it and reflect on it and maybe read it over yourself or read it to a friend and really think about the words because it will help you have a positive mindset and to remind you of what compassion means. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's been such an honor to be able to share this time with you. I hope that you have a wonderful day and remember that you are wonderful and you make this world more colorful just by being you. Have a great day. Bye.